Good morning to all of you. Welcome to Church on the Lawn. <laughs> um, I want to welcome all of you. I'm glad to see all your faces. I am glad to see a few new faces as well. We are so happy that you guys have joined us this morning. Um, if you are new, we would love to catch you at this table over here. Cheryl can Cheryl keep an eye out if you want to step over there. And we love to just get to know a little bit about you. And we have a gift for you inside that we'll grab afterwards. Um, but we are glad that you have joined us this morning. If you have kids and you um, have not grabbed a little packet for them, they're on that cart right there and next to the table. And some crayons are in the basket that you can grab a few of those just to occupy them some. Um, we do, if you didn't know, we are having lunch afterwards. Um, and um, we will be eating right out here. Um, if you didn't bring anything or didn't prepare, please stick around anyways. We have plenty of, of food and we would love to have you join us. Um, and then lastly, um, we are going to be um, dropping offering. Any offering that you have, you can drop it in the basket. There's a rock that we'll put on top so it doesn't float away. Um, but if you would like to give, that's where you can give, or you can go on the church website, smithfieldchristian.com, and there is a giving tab there as well. You can text it, but I don't remember the number off the top of my head. <laughs> Sorry. So anyways, let me pray for us real quick, and then we will get back into singing some more, okay? God, I thank you so much for your creation, and I thank you um, that we can enjoy it and we can worship you in your creation, God. And um, I just pray for this service, and I pray that you bless it and use everyone involved um, and just touch our hearts this morning, God. Um, and open our hearts to um, to you and your love for us. In Jesus' name, amen. I count on one thing, the same God that never fails when I fail.
Daniel for his faithfulness this morning. Oh 
Meditation. I know Joe's going to talk about grace, which opened the door for me. My second favorite preacher is Chuck Swindoll, and you know Joe is number one. But Chuck always talks about grace, and this is this comes from his some of his stuff. Titus two one and eleven through twelve. 
For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires, and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age. And then he has this powerful prayer I'll read for you. Thank you, dear Lord, for the beautiful way you teach us. Thank you for your patience when we fail. Thank you for your understanding in the midst of our own confusion. Thank you for reaching down to us when we never have reached up to you. Thank you for stopping us when we were running in the wrong direction, for setting the hounds of heaven after us. Thank you especially for this, for your grace. For by grace we have been saved through faith, and not, not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one can, may boast. What a great reminder. Thank you, dear God, for being tough on us when we needed it, for disciplining us so that we would walk worthy of the calling. How grateful we are that you have promised us a heavenly home free of guilt and shame and sin and sorrow and death. We look forward to eternity with you, with our Savior, whom, having not seen, we love, in whom, though we have not, we now not see him not, who, yet believing, we rejoice with joy unspeakable unspeakable and full of glory it's that eternity in heaven thing that we're getting ready to celebrate right now he, he promised that and it's because of his grace that we get that but Jesus died for each of us and we are going to share communions now to remind, remind ourselves because he already knows but to remind ourselves he loves us that much. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Father, for loving us as you do, for forgiving us as you do, for your grace and mercy that allows us to be here just now worshiping you. At this moment, as we share communion, the grace that you give us, and at this time also that we will share heaven with you one day and that will be forever something that's hard for each of us to fathom but thank you father for this opportunity thank you again for being in our life thank you for being here with us today in worship as we praise your name in everything thank you for loving us in jesus name we pray amen <laughs> favorite parts of this prayer time and before anybody says anything about my legs I just want you to know there are people here without shoes <laughs> anyways our prayer list uh, Jim Bass has cancer I think these are all friends of Dave's John and Ann Knox Johnny is certainly having some serious health conditions we want to certainly keep him in our prayer Mark Huber is having an operation and Helen Delgado is a friend of his from a while back and for a long time, and she's in a nursing home, so certainly want to keep her in our prayers. 
Prayers for the Carpenter family for peace of heart and soul over the loss of their beloved friend Ox, their furry brother. And any of us that have left lost a pet, we know it's hurtful. And so certainly want to pray for the kids in that situation and us adults. Ellen Huber is dealing with kidney stones. Hubert. Moselle's traveling home today. Her mother, uh, Carl said his mother is doing well. She was sitting up, doing okay, it, as things are, but uh, she's sitting up and talking and stuff. And so Moselle's on her way home. Certainly want to keep both of those, in, both of them in our prayers. And Carl, as he had a little bit episode here a couple weeks ago. So, you know, sometimes the doctors goof up. So we want to pray for those guys too. They're just practicing on us, you know. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Father, for prayer time. That we, that you give us this opportunity, this time to come and share the things in our heart, the things in our families, the things in our friends that are struggling or, or maybe rejoicing and, and praising you for all the wonderful things. But we just thank you for this time that we can do this. And I pray that each of us, we would do this on our own many, many times during the day as we share with you the, the problems of each other's hearts and, and just thank you for all the wonderful things in our lives. Thank you for allowing us to be here and we are here outside worshiping you and just what a blessing it is to be able to be here and, and to all the people that have gone through all the work to get this set up so that we can do it. So thank you, Father. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you for answering us. Help us to understand those answers. Sometimes they're a little tougher than what we we want to hear or know but help us to understand your will and not ours you are an awesome god in jesus name we pray amen well first of all before i get going um I want to say a big thank you for the past uh, few weeks to our friend, my cousin, Tracy Kiergaard, for just a really great job. If you've enjoyed her time with us, maybe give her a little hand and thanks. Um, it's been really great uh, to have her and to be uh, leading the team and stuff and, uh, and all that while Dan is on vacation and traveling and doing all kinds of uh, great stuff. Um, I, I love this being outside. This man, for a moment, I have like these weird flashbacks of being at church camp. So if I like break into some weirdness, it's probably because of that. And so it's thankfully the bugs aren't too loud, but I've been at some church camps where the frogs were louder than the preachers. Uh, so we're not too bad today with this. Um, I want you to think for, some, for a second about the things that you value. What are the things in your life that are most valuable to you? And then I want you to think, what if I was to propose to you a deal? I'm going to give you a piece, I don't know, maybe a piece of cloth about this big, and you're going to give me 50 bucks in return. And you can probably look at me like, I don't think so. But what if I then said, listen, I will, I'll draw a nice picture on both sides of this piece of cloth for you. I, I mean, I'll just use all my wonderful talent, my wonderful art skill, and draw you a nice picture. You'd probably still say, nah, no thanks. But then what if I said, oh, how about I'm going to do it of a former president? Then you'd probably say, well, which president before I, you know, answer. But I think, you know, the point is we'd kind of, you'd look at me, you'd think I was a weirdo for, for offering this. But the truth is, that's what our money is. Our, our currency, the U.S. currency is 75% cotton and 25% linen. Now, sure, we run it through a press and they uniformly put images on there and they put, you know, the, the, the ink and even some of the some of the more higher up bills, they have some different security kind of features built into it. But really, that's all it is. And when you think about the, the, the currency we have, even the big bills, there's nothing intrinsically valuable about that bill. It's we've all sort of agreed these are worth something. And they, we've all agreed that we can buy things with these and these are important and stuff like that. But other than that, it's really just cloth. Oh, I dropped out there. I'm gonna use this. Hey Nathan, I'm gonna use this, okay? There we go. Other than that, 
we have to all agree it's nothing more than just a piece of cloth, right? I mean, there's nothing special and fancy about money. Or you think about art. I don't know if any of you folks are art lovers. I won't make you raise your hand so we don't give you any kind of sideways looks. But sometimes people will spend just tons of money on a piece of art. And for one person, they'll look at it and they think it's beautiful and wonderful and stirring and moving and emotional and all that stuff. And the other person's like, I don't know, it looks like a bunch of squiggly lines to me. I just don't get it or whatever. You know, it, it's all very... Um, subjective. We all look at these things and we have our own kind of ways of, of basing it. I, I have a friend who right now is researching the value of his uh, his grandmother's Beanie Babies. Do you remember Beanie Babies? I mean, they came in Happy Meals for a little while. Uh, people were buying them at stores. Now some of these Beanie Babies are going for ten to fifty thousand dollars that people are buying these things for. Exactly. Barbara, that's exactly the face you're making. That's exactly what I'm feeling. I'm like, what in the world for that much money for but that's what that's how we place value on different things in different ways. Well, I want you to keep that in mind for a second. We're we're kind of in this middle of this series that we're doing right now that we're calling the summer worship set and we are looking at some of the different songs that we do on a regular basis on Sunday mornings and we're looking at the lyrics and trying to think through some of the meaning behind these lyrics and what things can they kind of stir in us in our mind and our heart as we worship with them. The very first week we talked about uh, we, we looked at the song Good Good Father and we looked at the characteristics of God and what makes him a good father. And then last week we we looked at the song Who You Say I Am. And we talked about our identity and how there's I mean there are tons of sources of identity out there, tons of places that we look for our identity, but truly the only place that we should be looking to is to God to find our identity. And today we're going to look at this song that we open the service with You Your Your Love Awakens Me. I want you to hear some of the lyrics in case you don't remember what some of them were, or they're even on your, your lyric sheet there. It opens up with this. It says, feel the darkness shaking. All the dead are coming back to life. Hear the song awaken. All creation singing, we're alive because you're alive. You called me out of the grave. You called me into the light. You called my name, and then my heart came alive. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. This is one of those songs that when you sing it, man, there should be like something stirring in you. There should be uh, some emotion and the spirit should just be kind of stirring you up and getting you excited about all that God has done for you. And in case you don't remember all that God has done for us, I want to read to you what Paul says in Ephesians chapter one. He says this. He says, praise be to the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Christ Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in, in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach fulfillment to bring unity to all things. In him, we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who, were, who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we who were put first, who first put our hope in Christ, might be the, of the praises of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who, had, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Did you hear some of those things that we've been given in Christ? Every spiritual blessing, our adoption to him, our redemption, our forgiveness that he's lavished on us, wisdom, understanding the gift of the Holy Spirit, a guarantee of the inheritance of him. There is so much just packed into there of all the blessings that God has given to us. And just like, just like it, it said in the song that we, we sang earlier, we're alive today because he is alive. And we have been blessed by so much because of Jesus' sacrifice. You see, there is so much value in what he gives us. And it's crazy uh, how, how all that value stuff works. You know, I asked someone one time, why, why are things like diamonds or gold 
valuable. And someone said, well, it's because, you know, they're, they're very rare. There's not a lot of them. Or it takes a lot of work to, to get them, to mine them, to bring them out. I mean, but truly, again, it's not so much, that's not the reason they're worth something. It's because we've said that there is worth in it. The thing is, is that God looks at us and he says that there is even greater worth in us. And what he offers us is a, of such value. There's a powerful parable I want to read to you. It's in Matthew 13. And Jesus talks about value and the things that we should value in this way. He says, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a, a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. If, you take, if you're a note taker like I am and you want to take notes in your outline there, the first little blank there is that God offers, what, what God offers us is of the greatest value. You see, there's so many things in life that we can run after and think that it's so important that there's such value. But the truth is, is that what God offers us is of the greatest value value. And, and Jesus in his being the master storyteller man tells it in such a powerful way of this guy discovering this treasure out in the field and selling everything he had just to gain this treasure. The, the British newspaper, The Guardian, actually reported um, a story last June that some guy by the name of Forrest Finn, that he went and hid a million dollars in the Rocky Mountains. He's not telling you where, but he's hid a million dollars in the Rocky Mountains, and he's kind of given out clues here and there. He even published a 24-line poem that describes where this million dollars is hidden. And the article said that people have quit their jobs. They have uh, depleted their savings accounts all to go and search for this million dollars. It's even been believed that around four people have lost their lives looking for this million dollars. People go to great lengths to gain things like this, this, this treasure, and really it's just this money, and what have they sacrificed for it? But what we see is that in Jesus, we have something that's so, so much more valuable. Jesus talked about the kingdom of heaven. Now, real quick with that, when we hear the kingdom of heaven, a lot of times we think of like the eventual kingdom of heaven that one day we'll spend eternity in, in heaven with, with God there. But that's not how Jesus' original hearers, his Jewish hearers, would have heard this. When they would have heard kingdom of heaven, they would have heard it more understanding is not so much this far off distant thing, but of this of this near and close thing of the fact of God's kingdom coming to us and God's kingdom being here and how God's presence can be lived out through us and God's values and God's purpose can be lived out through us. It's kind of like what Jesus said in John 10, 10. He says that the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But he says, but I have come that they may have life and they may have it to the full. You see, this idea of God's kingdom is not a thing that, man, one day we'll get to. One day we'll get to enjoy. One way, I mean, and that's the truth. We will spend eternity with our Father in heaven and that reward for all eternity. But the truth is, too, that we can experience this full and abundant life today, right now in him. But the thing is, as, as awesome and as incredible as that gift and all these things that we've already looked at this morning, is it as great of a, a, a value that we have in God God's gift, and here's your second blank for you, God's gift is meant to be shared. God's gift was never meant for you and I to say, this is awesome, and then run home and stick it in the closet, or hide it, or bury it, or keep it to ourselves and not tell anyone about it. I mean, think about the times that you've discovered something that's just so awesome and so great. I mean, even simple things like when you discover a new restaurant or maybe like a great vacation spot or you watch a brand new movie that's just, that's great. You know, a lot of times you may have a conversation with your spouse or a friend afterwards and you may say, you know, so-and-so would love this. We've got to tell so-and-so about this. Oh, you've got to go check out this place, this this movie, this restaurant, whatever it might be. And you kind of, you know, you think, think about who can I tell about this great thing? Uh, Beth and I, we uh, we discovered um, a food truck a couple weeks ago. El Burrito. Anybody ever been to, everybody, people have been to El Burrito around here. Well, they have a food truck that's like 100 times better than the restaurant. And they were parked out in uh, Rushmere Shores. Is that near you guys? Yeah. Yeah. So out there. And um, it, uh, yeah, I mean, it wasn't Rushmere Shores. Uh, but we, we drove out there, and it was incredible because it was right there on the James River out at this uh, this this community uh, site that they had. And they, we were eating tacos and burritos and just enjoying this awesome weather, this awesome time. And we had the conversation with each other about, hey, we've got to tell 
That's right. We said, yeah, we got to tell Jim and Joyce about this. Um, but we had these conversations about, we got to tell so-and-so, you know, oh, this person would love this, or isn't this just awesome? We need to tell them to come and park at the church parking lot so we can get burritos from it. All these different things. And we do that with different things in our life. We talk about, man, I should tell so-and-so about this. But so often we don't share the gift that God has given us. And this gift we can read about in Romans 10, 13. Paul says this. He says, he says, everyone, and this is an awesome gift. He says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's an awesome promise. That's an awesome gift. Now, that whole calls on the name of the Lord, sometimes we get kind of caught up in that. We're like, well, what does that mean, a call on the name of the Lord? Like, do I have to say something special? Is there a special magical phrase I have to say? I, I think of it more like this. Every wounded soldier who calls on the medic will be saved. It's not the calling on the medic that saves him. It's the medic that comes over and saves him. Or every drowning person in the pool who calls on the lifeguard will be saved. It's not so much the calling of the lifeguard, but it's that lifeguard jumping in and saving them. And us, when we, when we call on the name of the Lord, when we, when, we, when we call out to him in our heart, when we turn our lives to him, when we turn our heart to him, when we say, it's no longer about me, it's about you, Lord, that's when we can find that forgiveness and that salvation by acknowledging him and acknowledging that it's not about me. But, and this is the crux of today, if you get nothing else out of today, I want you to get this. With that awesome gift, that awesome blessing of everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, we can't miss what Paul says right after that. And again, let me read it again in verse 13. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them. You see, friends, God's gift of salvation to us is an incredible thing, but it's not meant to just stay with us. We are meant to share that with others. We are meant to tell others. We are meant to share this great gift, this thing of great value with others. Now, when we go and do that, sometimes we can do our best and we can feel like we're not making any headway. What I want to do is I want to wrap things up, finish things up by sharing with you two kind of important elements with that we've got to keep in mind. And the first kind of important element when we, when we want to share that gift with people is relationships. Our relationships with other people, they are vital. They are critical. They are probably the, one of the most powerful tools we have in sharing the good news of Jesus. They, they remove barriers that might be there between other people that they have of sharing the message of Jesus. But when there's a relationship there, those barriers are gone. It, it softens the heart. So you ever had one of, one of those talks with a friend that maybe someone else could not have said to that person, but because you're their friend, they listen, their heart is softened to that. And that's how it is when we have that relationship. In John 1:41. Uh, it, it's a really kind of a cool thing where Jesus is going and he's calling his disciples to follow him. And he calls Andrew to come and follow him and be his one of his apostles, one of his close followers. And, and we see what Andrew did, does right afterwards. It says the first thing Andrew did was to find his brother, Simon, and tell him, hey, we found a great taco truck. No, he didn't say that. Uh, he said, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. He thought, I've got to go get my brother. I've got to go get my family. And friends, that's how it should be for us. When we, when we think of all that we've been blessed with by God, we should start thinking, who else needs to hear about this? Who else can I tell about this? Man, our relationships are a perfect place to start. And if, you, if there is someone that you know that you need to share that message with and maybe you don't have a relationship with them, maybe that's the first step is to build that relationship, to build that rapport, and then to share with them this great gift. But the second key is not only relationships. The second thing is to live by example, to live by example. The way that we live, the choices that we make, friends, they speak volumes about us and they speak volumes to other people. And, and I'm not talking about like living perfect lives, right? I'm not talking about like never doing anything wrong, never slipping up, never having a, a sin-free life. I'm talking about living the kind of life that your love for other people and the love of Christ can shine through you to other people. Peter wrote about it in, 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 his, in his epistle, 1 Peter 12, 2, 12. He says, live such good lives among the pagans. And that's just Peter's insensitive way of saying non-Christians. Live such good lives among the non-Christians that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits. And again, this isn't about living a perfect life. This isn't about never doing anything wrong. It's about loving people in such a way 
that, that they want to glorify God. You see, because there are going to be a lot of people that unfortunately are not going to be as excited as we are when they when God returns when when Jesus splits the sky and comes back there aren't going to be pe- people there're going to be people who are not going to be too excited about it but if we could share with them the message of hope and grace and salvation then when that day comes they'll be just as excited about it as we are and so we need to live by example so that they can see that in us and they can say yeah that's the kind of life that I want that's the kind of hope that I want that's the kind of joy and peace and grace and forgiveness that I want in my life. You see, when Jesus came on the scene and he called all his disciples to follow him and be with him, he told, he, he said, you know, you're going to be with me. You're going to follow me. You're going to spend time with me. You're going to watch me. And that's what they did. They watched and they followed. But then there came a point in time when he left. And before he left, he told all of them, he says, now what you're to do is to go and tell people what you've seen and experienced. He called it his witnesses. And friends, Jesus has called us to do the exact same thing, to be his witnesses and to tell people what we have personally experienced, the love, the hope, the joy, the forgiveness, the the life change that each of us have gone through. It's time that we take that to someone else and we tell them, hey, I've got something of such great value for you, for you to hear about. Let me tell you about Jesus. I hope you'll do that. Let me pray for us. Father, I'm I'm so grateful for the people in my life that took that step to to share with me the great hope of your son that that maybe lived the example in my life, that maybe uh, stepped out in such a way that they, they, uh, they wanted me to see your love through them. And God, I pray that that for each of us, as we begin to think about those people in our life who maybe don't have that hope, maybe don't have that love, maybe don't have that that forgiveness in their life that they need, Lord, I pray that you would help us to, to see the ways that we can extend that to them, that we could share your love with them. And God, we we are so blessed. And the things that you bless us with are of such great value, the greatest value we could possibly know. Lord, I pray that we wouldn't keep it to ourselves, but God, I pray that you would help us to Help us to find ways to share that and to extend it out to others so that they can find the same kind of hope and mercy and peace that we have found. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, friends, why don't we stand? We're going to sing one final song together.